In the game of basketball, teamwork is a critical skill, but teamwork has applications on and off the court. Former NBA player and European basketball champion Pat Burke has combined his love of the game of basketball with a life-enriching curriculum for kids which he says will transform their behavior, build confidence, and instill responsibility. We caught up with Pat to hear all about Hoops Life. Welcome to Profiles on Lake Central Television. I'm Mark Roberts. We're on location this month at Hoops Life in Tiberias, and we're talking this month with Pat Burke, the founder of Hoops Life. Welcome to Profiles. Thank you. Appreciate you hosting us here. It's a pretty cool facility. Uh, we're happy with it. How long have you been here now? Uh, this is the first year that we've been in this location. Let's go back in time and then we'll work our way forward. Obviously, once people get past your six foot 11 height, the natural question is, oh, you must have been a basketball player your whole life. Yeah, that is the, the question I generally get asked uh, most of the time is, you know, I've played basketball in my life and that's the farthest thing from the way it all started. How did it start? Well, I have to go back. When I was four years old, my family moved here from Ireland. And being the uh, first generation to go through the American lifestyle, we were um, unprepared of the sporting world and all of that. And so uh, my aunt asked me if I ever wanted to play ice hockey because she had put her son, my cousin, into it. And so at first grade, uh, my first introduction to sports here in the United States was ice hockey. And I played it for eight years, and I absolutely loved it. When you uh, transitioned into basketball, I mean, did you hit a growth spurt? Did you get burnt out on hockey? How did you make that transition? Well, at the end of ice hockey, up north, it's common for, uh, for people to host uh, uh, an equipment swap. And so I noticed that there was a trend going on that I was getting closer to the end of the table. You would go to someone's garage and then kids would bring their equipment. And if you put down some shin pads or skates, you could pull the next size up. And uh, the last time in eighth grade, I put my shin guards down and I remember there was nothing there. My mom looked at me and said, I think we're going to have to find a new sport. So she signed me up for football. I remember walking up in full pads and equipment. And as I looked over from shoulder to shoulder, you know, the guy said, well, how tall are you? And so I shared, I'm, I'm 5'10". And I remember there was some snickering and, you know, some commotion going on. And one of the guys, another guy jumped up and he, he got up next to me and he was looking up at me and he said, you, you can't be 5'10", because I'm 6'2", and I'm looking up at you. Hmm. And I remember that sparked this understanding that, you know, something's changed here. Um, so at the end of that practice, I ran home, I grabbed a cereal box, I put it up against the wall, measured it, and uh, I found out I was 6'5", and I had grown seven inches in that summer. And so I walked up to my mom without her being, uh, having an understanding of how much I had grown. Um, and again, I, I remind you that we're from Ireland. I walked up to her and I said, Mom, I, I'm actually 6'5", I've grown seven inches. And she looked up and said, oh, Jesus, would you look at you? <laughs> it was quite a surprise. There were events uh, early in your youthful career in sports um, that started to shape your future. Uh, and maybe you didn't realize it at that time. Um, interactions with coaches, interactions with, with, with other players. What role did your youth play in what will eventually become Hoops Life as we talk more about that? Like any youth, um, I would say that my, my childhood, of course, was, um, you know, filled with question marks and riddles, trying to figure out who I was going to be and uh, looking to become my best. That is to say that uh, when I entered that football program, I was just looking to make friends and, and, and join something. The following year, I was two inches taller. And it wasn't so much the coaches at that point, it was the students and the people around me. Walking in my sophomore year at 6'7", produced something around the people around me that uh, I wasn't ready for. And that was every day in the hallway, them telling me, you should play basketball. You're tall, you should play basketball. And that became a theme of pushing me towards a direction of where people thought that I would have my most success. And, uh, you know, the idea that height translates into, you know, better basketball players couldn't be, you know, further from the truth. When I actually went into play, I couldn't catch the ball, and I couldn't shoot the ball, and I couldn't pass the ball. And what I had was this ability to share my 6'7 height, but the, the reality was is that I wasn't prepared. I played eight years of ice hockey, and it didn't translate. Fast forward, though, you made a career out of basketball, though, between college and, and professional. 
take us through that. How you, you played college ball where? I played at Auburn. And talk talk about your uh, your professional career because you played in the U.S. as well as Europe. I did. I, um, I coming out of Auburn University, um, I had an opportunity to go through the draft process and work out. Didn't work out in my in my future at that point to actually be drafted. And so I took a road to go to Europe. Previously, I shared that I started playing basketball my sophomore year. So at 16 years old, um, everybody that had an experience of watching me play told me that my best years were ahead of me because I hadn't, uh, you know, I hadn't figured out everything. So I went over to Europe and I played over there for five years before I ever came back. And my first year I played in Spain and it was the closest I ever had to success um, with a team where we went all the way to the finals, but we lost in the final game. And that's a memory that I, I took with me for the longest time to remember you can make it all the way um, and if you don't give everything, you know, you can't go back in time. And so I remember from that point on in my career, I believe that I started to take on a, a new approach in every one of those seasons. And then, um, you know, going into the next few seasons, I went over to Greece and played for four years. Five years later, you know, I had an opportunity back here in Orlando. Your NBA career was winding down, coming to an end, and uh, you were starting to think about what was next for you. Hoops life? Not yet. No? No. I actually majored in communications, graduated with a degree, and uh, I actually thought I was going to get into broadcasting. A friend of mine here in, uh, in town asked me, do I ever train kids? And uh, at that time, I had three of my own children, and I shared the joke that, you know, kids don't listen to me. And, uh, but I was up for it because he shared that those two young men had seen me play, and they just thought it would be awesome to have the experience. So um, I had a basketball goal at my house, and I invited those two young men to come train. And um, real quick, it became um, something that I was attached to with the idea of helping and supporting somebody, especially the youth inside of this. And within about a month, there were about 20 kids coming into my backyard to learn and train in basketball. And then you realized with these 20 kids, there's an opportunity here. Yes, and then I went up to my my wife Peyton and I shared with her you know I absolutely love what I'm doing and I'm running out of daylight and space in the backyard and that presented um, an option or an opportunity to move forward and do something you love and find an actual warehouse space and create a gym. For those that are unfamiliar explain to us the concept of Hoops Life sort of in a, in a general overall view and then we'll get into some more detail. In the Hoops Life program individual children are asked what they want to work on and asked what it is that they would like to do as far as becoming their best. And that means that it's not a ball going through a hoop. It's a simple concept of self-awareness. How am I affecting the people around me, whether it's my parents, whether it's the children that I'm running up and down the floor with, or whether it's my teacher. And when you allow a child that comfort level not to be told what to do, not to submit to being told and telling them what I believe as an adult would help their lives. You're actually allowing them a safe place for them to figure it out themselves. And when that happens, and it does it in such a way that it creates team and family, I mean, I get goosebumps right now thinking about how the children start to change and transform their approach with their homework or their responsibilities at the house or even their communication with their parents. And it provides also the parents to finally see that maybe there is a way in which they can also assist too. How much of this is basketball and how much of it is the bigger picture life skills? I would say it's 85% of it is the life skill lessons. And then the other part, of course, is 15. But there are children walking into this program that don't even want to play basketball, that they've never even played the game, that they, they understand exactly how it's going to assist them with comfort, that it's not about them having pressure on being able to dribble a ball. So inside of that, it's, it's to not talk about the ball itself. I mean, I don't want to share how in-depth it is with confusion, but 
The basketball is really just the bridge. It's the conduit by which we use it to, you know, introduce these other things. Excellent. And this is a great place for us to stop, take a quick break. We're talking with Pat Burke with Hoops Life. You're watching Profiles on LSTV. We'll be right back. I have one child that always made really good grades, but just was kind of falling off a little bit from what he was normally doing and I was wondering what was going on but since he's been here he's back on track I don't know if he was getting bored I don't know if he was losing his self-confidence but he has definitely gained that back since he's been here at Hoops Life. My boy was a good boy. He did well in school, but you know he wasn't very social. And I feel that this class has done a great job of bringing out his personality and and making him more of a part of a team and bringing up his self confidence quite a bit. Welcome back to Profiles on Lake Sumter Television. I'm Mark Roberts. We're talking with Pat Burke with Hoops Life. Right before the break, you were kind of explaining to us the philosophy of Hoops Life that it's more than just basketball. Tell me a bit, a bit about sort of what you're trying to achieve. What are the philosophies and what are the goals for the kids that come through the program? If you think about it, how much money and time does corporate America spend looking to, be to invest in team building and understanding how, how people can work with each other? What we've done in creating the Hoops Life program is starting that from seven years old. How many professional athletes actually after they're done with their career can create simple analogies of how a sport can work its way back into business and talking. But the facts are that when we are youth, most programs don't have the opportunity in the moment it's happening to actually have a child understand exactly what's being taught with the ability to put it back into the off the court play or off the field. And that's what Hoops Life started to do. And, and that, of course, creates something that's so overwhelming and it, it makes it so that the children do have a transformation. Now, once they leave here, they've got their home life. So what role does their home life and their parents play in either creating almost a, a challenge to what you're trying to achieve or support what you're trying to achieve? Well, as a parent, I would want the best for my children. And that's exactly what we get in the Parents in Hoops life. Partnering or teaming up with a parent sometimes can have fear for other parents. I'm not sharing that I want to parent someone's child, and I'm not saying that I have the manual to parenting. What I have is a program that assists children and parents to see something that they really want. Inside of that, there's a commitment level. You couldn't do this in one conversation. That's why Hoops Life is a 12-week program. From the moment they walk in, myself and my staff are talking with parents about what it is we can assist them in. The children are actually sharing where they would want to go with individual goals. And what are some of the most common that you hear out of that conversation? From the parents or the children? Well, I guess both. Well, a lot of the and times... I would, and, and I, are they, so you're suggesting that they may not see things the same way? I would share two years ago that I was trying to help my child understand how to clean his room or trying to get them to do their homework or trying them to have them understand their emotions and how to manage them. Those individual goals are what we work with. But what if a question was asked about how they're thinking in those moments? Or what could we do to assist you to make that better? And that provides, again, that ability for a child to have a comfort level. I mean, the, the amount of trust and the amount of um, ability for a child to share what it is they want with a group that's working with them, that's what produces the Hoops Life uh, measurements of achievement. The goals that are happening are really just goals in which we're helping them and parents start to identify what's going on. And how do you measure success? I mean you've been doing this long enough, you must have some success stories. We do. We, uh, we've partnered up with schools, we partnered up with understanding everything from attendance to time management to grades. Um, and then there's some of the things that you can only measure by a, a parent actually maybe quantifying a scale of 1 to 10. How do you measure a child's confidence? How do you know when they've actually come to a point where they can come up to any adult and look them in the eye and shake their hands? Or when they have the ability to communicate? 
right in front of everybody. Well, those success stories have stories of a child who used to wear sunglasses and parents walked into a room and telling other parents and adults, please don't look my child in the eyes because they have a fear to those type of children and that particular child moving on to becoming one of the leaders of this program and actually going on to play and travel ball and being one of the kids that everybody else wants to be like. That's another one of those goosebump moments where I know that we created that. And that measurable is, uh, is something that, you know, it, it makes people realize that there's something special going on there. I mean, again, there are other programs. There are other basketball programs. The basketball is great. We're not looking to make the greatest basketball players. But if they want that, we can do it. But what we're looking to do is make greater people. What difference would your youth been like had a program like this existed? Because, I mean, it's, it's pretty forward thinking. Wow, I'd have to look back at where I was. Um, I was not the best student. My parents were hardworking. Um, my dad worked long hours and so did my mom. Growing up, I had the ability to throw my book bag in the corner of a room and never do my homework. I struggled with getting things done on time, but also I struggled with not having that uh, understanding of how to do it, time management and all of that. A program like this, I believe, of course, would have created uh, an understanding of how to do things with a team. I learned a lot of things in life early on how to do them by myself. And many times people don't understand how to ask for help in a way that uh, provides a team to, to come and help them. You know, having the ability to ask questions can provide assistance, but when you're doing things by yourself, things start to pile up. I, I've told many people on many occasions that I used to go into the idea that if I was using a lawnmower and it would break, I would try to fix it myself. And there's a lot of broken lawnmowers in my garage. And that's not you, that's just men in general. That's right. You're, you're in really good company. But the understanding that if you can actually ask people about, you know, where could I find a more reliable one or where could I get the assistance to fix this, well, then you're starting an opportunity for someone else to contribute to what it is you're sharing. It's, inter it's interesting some of the things you pointed to. I mean, you talked about grades and focusing and time management. All the things you described back from when you were youth still exist now plus all this other stuff. What role does technology play? What role oh, does wow. the media play? What role does uh, the, the single parent household play? I mean, well, it's tougher to be a kid today than it was when we were kids. I would say it is if you look at it like a challenge. It's like saying if something's not going on in your life or something's getting in the way, everybody wants to say, I'm challenged with this. What if it was just an opportunity? I mean, that much thinking of everything is a challenge to saying it's an opportunity would look like this. Four years ago, I volunteered all around these towns, refing, coaching, all kinds of things. And I thought to myself as I was raising my kids, this area is challenged with a focus on youth, looking to create better programs. I was challenged thinking I was by myself. Today, I have an understanding as I sit inside of a 10,000 square foot facility, the opportunity was always there. I just hadn't asked anybody if they were interested in doing the same thing. 12 years of professional basketball was never about the places I played and, and the money that I made. It was about understanding what created team, what created the best moments of my life it took me retiring to figure out how to put it all together and actually share it with kids. Because if you can't articulate it in a way that they get it, it's lost. You've traveled the world, you've traveled the country. Why Lake County? How'd you wind up here and, and why do you keep doing it here? A beautiful woman. <laughs> Good answer. Well, I went to Auburn University and I met my wife at Auburn. She went to Auburn as well. Um, my sophomore year was her freshman year. And uh, I remember after we started dating, um, I took visits down here with her family. And when I was down here, I realized that there was a, a great sense of family and community. Um, and it was a, a safe place that I thought that, you know, 
if I was to raise a family, this is where I would want to be. And over the years of playing and coming back in here in the off seasons, it only um, created a stronger understanding of what that was. Is there a part of you that, that wonders though, if you were in a, a larger area, if you were in Orlando, could you take what you've done and affect more kids multiple times over? Well, who's to say I can't do that? This is, is that a, the goal? Well, this is a grassroots approach. Um, when I first started up with those two children in my backyard, you know, I couldn't walk away from that and say, I'm going to go do bigger and better things. It was, how do you do bigger and better things with them involved? And staying inside of Lake County leads me to believe that, you know, this is, uh, you know, just as good as any other place. But what makes it better is I know a lot of the people in here. I know a lot of the families. If in the event this has an opportunity for uh, growth and going into other communities, we'll, we'll tackle that when it happens. But right now, this is, this is where we are, and it's working with you know, other business people and other community leaders, and I'm working with the families right here to overcome that idea that it was ever challenged. It is just another opportunity to create a better team and a stronger team and a more effective team in assisting youth. For parents and youth who are watching this, what would you tell them who, who is best suited, who is going to best benefit from being part of Hoops Life? I will give you a line from my brother-in-law. He's a wise man. And he shared with me, I don't know any kid who doesn't need Hoops Life. It is an opportunity to learn about yourself, create self-awareness, understand accountability, and it provides 12 weeks to partner with parents, with a former NBA player who traveled the world with an understanding of how to provide elements that create team, not only on a court, but in their home and in their schoolwork that um, everybody in here is getting. And it's, it's a wonderful experience. What is it not? Help us understand what are the misperceptions of what Hoops Life is? It isn't strangers, you know, it isn't yelling at kids. It isn't telling people from a sideline what to do. It's, it's more family, it's more relationships, it's more finding out where people want to go other than having people tell you where you should go. With all the things you've achieved, including making it all the way to the championship game when you were playing in Europe. Where does this stack in, on your level of accomplishment, fulfillment? Well, I, I would say that this is the new chapter. Playing, there was success and understanding out of performance. On the other side of this now, this isn't, again, this isn't being a part of a team as a player. This is being a part of a team as a coach and assisting in that way. This is, the, this is the best thing that I've ever been a part of in that capacity because it's so new and um, again, is it's, it's something where you can actually see and share with parents in the community you live in about the growth of it. You know, I had an opportunity last year to step out of here and I went into one of the middle school gyms to watch a game and I was shocked at how many kids had been through this program and they were coming up to me and shaking my hands and telling me about their grades and what they were doing. And that's the most rewarding thing. You know, when you have someone coming up to you and talking to you about your performance and wanting an autograph, they don't really know you. They just admire what it is you're doing. But when you have children coming up to you and they, you've had a, an ability to assist them or you've had a mom and dad come up and say thank you for assisting us on this. I mean, that's, I couldn't measure that. It's just, um, it's an unbelievable feeling. Pat, it was an absolute pleasure talking with you. Thanks so much for sharing and uh, continued success with Hoops Life. Thank you very much. For more information on Pat Burke's Hoops Training Facility or the Hoops Life Program, log on to hoopspatburke.com. Featured profiles from this episode can also be found on our website, lakesumtertv.com, and on our YouTube channel. And if you're interested in having your business, organization, or event profiled in an upcoming episode, send an email to lakesumtertv at gmail.com. Hair and makeup is provided by Talk of the Town, 2nd Street in downtown Leesburg. Profiles is a production of Red Apples Media 
in partnership with Lake Sumter State College.